In this tutorial, we'll be going over the basics of VLAN and lag on FreeNAS 910. We'll be discussing the FreeBSD lag protocol, how to edit the lag interface, how to edit a member interface, and adding a VLAN. Lag is a link aggregation and link failover are multiple network interfaces that provides fault tolerance and high speed links. By allowing multiple network interface cards, or NICs, the system increases its bandwidth and redundancy. Lag also allows you to combine the NICs so that they're viewed as a single link. If one NIC goes down or is disabled, none of the connections are lost and only performance is impacted. So let's start by logging into FreeNAS. On the main menu, click Network, Link Aggregations, then Add Link Aggregation. Or you can click on the left hand sidebar and click Network, Link Aggregations, and then Create Link Aggregation. A new dialog box will appear. You'll see two sections to choose from, Lag Protocol and Physical NICs. First, let's talk about the different options in Lag Protocol. Failover. Failover is the default protocol. Failover will only sense traffic through an active port. The active port is referred to as the master, and any other connected ports are the designated failover and become active in case any failures from the master port. FEC, or Fast Ether Channel, static setup does not negotiate aggregation with the peer or exchange or exchange frames to monitor the link. Please note that FEC is a Cisco proprietary protocol and it is not a recommended option to use. If the switch supports LACP, it should be used instead. LACP negotiates aggregation with the peer into one or more link aggregated groups. In this setting, incoming and outgoing traffic will be balanced across full duplex ports lag to achieve the greatest possible speed. One thing to remember about LACP is that it is bi-directional, balancing outgoing traffic and allowing incoming traffic on any active port. Load balance. Load balance is designed to balance the outgoing traffic across active ports and incoming traffic through other active ports. Load balance also does not negotiate aggregation with the peer, and it is a static setup like FEC. Round Robin Round Robin has the same settings as load balance, but instead of choosing specific ports for certain traffic, it distributes the outgoing in Round Robin schedule and incoming traffic through any other active ports. Round Robin violates Ethernet frame order and should be used with caution. None None disables incoming and outgoing traffic. It is intended to do nothing but as a way to disable any traffic without disabling the lag interface itself. Now let's head on over back to the GUI. The recommended options are generally either failover or LACP. If you want more overall bandwidth, you will want to choose LACP, which retains a very similar failover feature while doubling bandwidth. However, if you aren't trying to maximize bandwidth, failover provides redundancy without complexity. LACP is the preferred lag protocol, but requires that the switch supports active LACP. If the switch does not support active LACP, failover is the preferred protocol. Next on the list of options is the physical network interface cards, or NICs. Choose the desired physical NIC and click OK. Then you will see your new link aggregation on the left sidebar, or on this list. Next, click on View Link Aggregations, then click Edit Interface. A new dialog will appear. Here you can change the interface name you would rather call your lag. I'll leave mine as lag0 for demonstration purposes. If you're using a DHCP server, make sure you check the DHCP box. If you're not using a DHCP server, it is mandatory to input your IPv4 address and IPv4 netmask. IPv6 should only be checked if your DHCP server is capable of providing IPv6 address information. If so, the IPv6 address is optional, but the netmask is required. Next, click OK. Now click on Edit Members, then Edit under the Action menu. A new dialog will appear. This screen allows you to configure the individual physical interface that you specified. Since I don't have any changes to make, I'm going to click OK. Now we're going to configure Virtual LAN, or VLAN for short. VLAN is a group host with a common set of requirements that communicate as they are attached to the same broadcaster name, regardless of their physical location. So let's begin. Scroll over to the left sidebar and click Network and the drop down menu VLANs, then add VLAN. A new dialog will appear. Here you will see a few options that you'll be able to choose from. Virtual interface needs to have the value of the VLAN and the integer that represents the interface. Next is your parent interface. Then input your VLAN tag. Enter the VLAN ID here that you configured on your network for your FreeNAS. Once you're done configuring your VLAN, click OK. 
Once you are done with that, you should have finished the configuration process for lag and VLAN. That's it, thank you for watching and stay tuned for our next tutorial. This video was made possible by iX Systems, the sponsor and developer of the FreeNAS project. Many people have asked, how can they support the FreeNAS project? For those interested, we offer a wide range of storage products that leverage FreeNAS. For enterprise customers that need high availability and 24-7 support, we offer TrueNAS. For business customers that need powerful and rock-solid FreeNAS storage, we offer FreeNAS Certified. For home and small office users, we offer the FreeNAS Mini and the Mini XL. For more information, visit ixsystems.com storage.